July 17, 2021. This is a follow-up video for the soil resist resistivity map. Uh, man, I get tongue twisted on that one. And I said I found something. But before I get to that, I just wanted to discuss um, magnetic field meters that people bring to the cemetery. Um, people are always coming up to me saying, hey, I'm getting this reading over here, over there. And it's, you know, there's times where it's the same spot. And, uh, you know, they think, you know, something paranormal is coming on, but whatever. It's To me, I, I think there's a lot of natural stuff. So a lot of times I do find natural things. And this time, there is a natural explanation for one that's in the southwest corner. So during the resistivity map, I noticed that the soil in this one particular area was very conductive. And I remembered, oh, well, that's right. My compass deviates in that area sometimes a few degrees. Depends on the day. Um, in raining, actually, after a good rain, um, you know, my compass can deviate in certain areas, and this is one of them. Pause here. You know, I thought maybe uh, there was something metallic underground that was uh, giving off a magnetic anomaly, and when it rained, um, it allowed current, very small amounts, I guess, or something, but some sort of current to flow that would cause that deviation. Usually that's a uh, rational explanation don't have any answers right now but it, this is leading to uh you know just studying this little spot some more and there is an area directly over this uh magnetic anomaly and where the there's an impression in the soil i thought okay well maybe it's a casket it collapsed and that's what happens and there's metal on caskets and this one there was kind of a straight line uh, which is not usually a natural thing and I thought okay it's probably some metal trim and stuff like that on a casket but there's nothing supposed to be buried here there's actually quite a circumference area where there's nothing buried now this particular plot that was near it uh, the Frundel family had apparently had it and it, the name was scratched off and for whatever reason may, I'll try and dig into the stuff later as to why they may have happened but so according to this it was an unused lot. I mean, it's whatever. Now, where this impression is, though, according to my measurements, it should be in a six-foot buffer zone where nothing's supposed to be buried anyway. So it got a little weird. Okay, like, what's going on? What's under there? And uh, using the tool I got for sensing, magnet, you know, for pipes and stuff underground, I, I can go down pretty deep. It seems to be something under three feet, based on the magnetic readings plus the resistivity readings because then I did a higher resolution measurement around that area and it didn't change too much except directly over the anomaly um, there's 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 a voltage uh, not not super high or anything like that but there's a you know there's a noticeable increase in voltage so something is conducting something there's metallic whatever and it made sense where, you know, after it rained, why the compass would deviate more. Probably because there's a little bit of current going on enough to deviate that compass. But this field is, it's actually minimum 20 feet circumference. So, um, or 40 feet, sorry, 20 feet each side. And uh, to me, that's kind of big. I don't, I don't even get that off the fence or anything else. I'm like, you know, that's, that's a pretty good chunk of metal down there. And uh, it extends a little further. It gets a little weaker, but it does extend a little bit more, the disturbance anyway. And back in 1994, so back in 1994, uh, Dale Kazmarek of the Ghost Research Society, he had um, a report where they were detecting between the Fullerton headstone, which happens to be that headstone you see in the famous lady sitting on the stone, that paranormal stuff. It's got that angled tree. And uh, so between that stone and the Newman stone on the far west end of the cemetery, uh, there were reports of them getting magnetic anomalies. Now, I do, the field does extend that far. Uh, the, str the strong part of the field starts to get pretty close to the borderline of something there, and then the weak field extends a little further. Between planes, now there's people coming, great. So there's, um, yeah, why don't I wait till they pass by? All right, so where was I? Dale Kazmarek, 1990s, uh, their field report. I think it was 94, right? 
Uh, anyway, so between the Fullerton stone and the Newman stone, there's these anomalies. It's like there's a 20 foot radius uh, each side, so actually it's 40 feet. And uh, from let's say uh, north and south, it gets a little different. The side lobes of it are a little different, um, but still generally 40 feet around. It's got kind of a weird shape, uh, but the anomaly is straight. Now that straightness is kind of more of a man-made thing it seems so I'm like okay but it's sitting in the six foot buffer zone that ain't right uh, but apparently they didn't seem to want to follow this map uh, that they came up with and burying people so it's kind of a clusterfuck <laughs> with the burying out here um, so I went ahead and I looked at some more of the survey rods that they put in the ground to mark out the 20 by 20s and I did find some quite a few and uh, you know throw in some shots and you know you can see where even the orange paint lines up with some of them. The orange paint that's still there, most of it washed away. Uh, when you get near the anomaly area, though, they started putting these extra rods in a more uh, in a 12 foot spacing. So I know they subdivided lots. Let's say uh, you know uh, 10 by 20 or something like that, or even a six foot by something. It got kind of weird. Uh, don't know what they were intending there, but according to the map, nothing's supposed to be there. I don't know. The Frundle family is supposed to have this lot nearby. His name was scratched off. Maybe they found something underground. They decided, well, we can't use that. Something's going on. Nobody documented it. I don't know. I, what I do know is that on the survey rods, not my uh, particular markings, but if you go by the their survey rods in that area, there is no buffer zone. I, I don't get it. And the anomaly goes right down the middle between two lots of where their survey rods are. So why would they bury somebody right there anyway? I don't know. It, it gets kind of weird. Maybe nobody's buried there. Just don't be digging, okay? Yeah. Don't get yourself in trouble. Don't get curious when you figure out this little area. Don't start digging because it looks to be below three feet. And, you know, if you hit a casket, you're probably going to feel bad. Or worse, you get in a lot of trouble, okay? Um doesn't matter what matters is that if you're using these magnetic meters out here yeah this area can screw with your meter it doesn't mean it's paranormal it just means there's something in the area disturbing the magnetic field it has a 40 foot radius minimum uh, it extends a little further on each side you know like these little uh, 10 foot 12 foot kind of things going on or is it 14 feet I forget but it does extend it gets pretty far consider this more of a preliminary video I do want to like analyze this area a little bit more actually I'm probably gonna do the whole cemetery magnetic anomaly field mapping and all this kind of stuff but uh, you know I just want to try to give a nice good resolution to it uh, yeah, anyway that, that's pretty much it that's what was found so when it does rain whatever this is it's metallic and it's probably conducting electricity just a small amount I mean, even the uh, testing that was done directly over the anomaly itself, uh, there was an increase in voltage in the soil, and it's all natural, whatever. So it's uh, it can make a compass deviate a little bit. Um, finding survey markers, whatever, they're only like like an inch or two below the soil. So um, you know, you come across those, you, you know, you're not going to get in a bunch of trouble. Just don't take them out of the ground, please. Um, it'd be a challenge anyway. I'm sure they're probably a few feet long or something, probably three feet. Anyway, that's pretty much it. That's maybe part one. I'll get around to doing a part two if I uh, get this other map complete and some other details and whatnot. So, hey, if you have a, a magnetic field meter and uh, and you're out here, just uh, as I was saying before the plane interrupted. If you have a meter and you see me out here, um, you know, I'd like to hear more about what you find. Some people report things when it seems to be odd, some don't. But if you uh, happen to watch this, you happen to see me out here, um, I'd love to kind of tail behind and see what your readings are like on, on different style meters. People going around uh, using some of the more high-end stuff, that's one thing. A lot of people have the cheapy things. Uh, cheapy ones are, are pretty bad. And... Uh, they get all sorts of wonky over here don't be using them for paranormal stuff so in closing for this one I'm going to throw in some random clips of me going over the anomaly with this guy here um, there's two sensors in it one down here one up here somewhere 
and as you walk into the field this one will start to be get unbalanced from this one and you actually can start to act hear the shift uh, just to give you kind of an idea have fun and I'll catch you later Yeah, bitch! Magnets! Oh!